into another segment of pointing out the obvious. We call it Homer's Corner. It's where I, Patrick Russell, EA, along with my venerable co-host, Blake, we'll talk about sports stories and only the sports stories that we give a shit about. All right, Blaine, you're a right-wing political consultant, but not just a talking head, a real operative in the war that rages in our country for the rule of law. Blaine, you're here to explain, if you can, right-wing spin. All right, Blaine, today's sports story is, well, let's touch base on one thing first. Hometown Phoenix Suns, congratulations for making it into the Western Conference Finals. Currently, they're awaiting the winner of the Los Angeles Clippers versus the Utah Jazz. Now, injuries has played a big part in determining the outcome of that series, so still up in the air who the Phoenix Suns will be meeting. But in the meantime, they're going to get uh, rested and they're going to get healed up and make that final push into the finals. We're looking forward to a great series, guys. Good luck. Now, Blaine, what I wanted to talk to you about is this. There's been coaching changes recently. We have one Stan Van Gundy after only one season with the New Orleans Pelicans. And Rich Carlisle, who after 13 seasons of helming the Dallas Mavericks has been now diplomatically asked to part ways with the team and he has done so. Now, what connects the stories together is that there's reports that it's been the team's respective superstars that were the catalyst for the coaching moves. First in New Orleans, Zion Williamson and his family apparently didn't like Stan Van Gundy's coaching style, which isn't too surprising because if you know Stan Van Gundy's history, he's kind of a cross between a Mike Krzyzewski verbal blast and a chair throwing tirade from Bobby Knight. So I can understand that the younger athlete might have a problem with that older coach style. And then in Dallas, you have Luka Doncic, which apparently for one reason or another, didn't like the rotation moves or the roster moves that Rich Carlisle made and didn't make, right? Now we've seen this before, right? They're following the footsteps of Magic Johnson, who once got his coach fired, right? We're talking about Paul Westfall, oh, yeah. Michael Jordan, and in his first year with the uh, Chicago Bulls, Doug Collins was uh, sent to the curb. Uh, and let's face it, LeBron James, I mean, he makes it a rite of passage every time he comes to a new team for there to be some type of coaching change, right? You're talking about Paul Silas, the one day experiment that was Brendan Malone, all the way to David Blatt and Luke Walton all have LeBron to thank, at least in small part, for their early career move. Okay, but my question to you is this, Blaine. Player empowerment. Should we as the common fans support our players, even if it means forcing the front office of our favorite team to scrap on the fly long-term, hopefully well-crafted plans and long-term investments and draft picks that now have to be tossed out on the whim of your superstar. Now, albeit the whim of your cash cow superstar, your thoughts. Thank you, brother Pat. People, I'd like to spotlight the exact tragic moment in American sports history when the glorious and virtuous word dynasty was replaced by the unholy term super team. It was in 1992, y'all, when the Dream Team took the world by storm and beat all those foreign teams by an average of 40 points. Not that you'd know it by the starry-eyed look on all those foreign players who were just happy to be on the court, close enough to smell the Fermenta cheese of NBA legends. Ever since then, though, GMs have been chasing the proverbial dragon, spinning haphazardly on overpaid ball hogs and past their prime gunners. Right. Hoping, dare I say, praying for the injection of these bloated and salary cap busting contract players to be the difference between being hailed by the press as an architect of success versus handing a resume to ESPN looking for a sportscaster job. I remember when I was coming up, you know, as a young blood, our super teams were super because we had dynasties, y'all. Right. You knew each and every player on the roster. Mm -hmm. Shoot, have my California friends name their sons Kobe because after shouting it for 20 years, it was just easier to remember. <laughs> now, I hear the term all the time, super team. But I ask you, 
What's so super about a collection of aging divas who have more hidden breakdowns than a phone call you would buy from a man named Slick? Oh, Lord. All you gotta do is look at the current concoction of the super team, who? the Brooklyn Nets. Okay. Sure. On paper, a roster with Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Blake Griffin, and even if you looked hard enough under the bench, you'd even find a DeAndre Jordan. <laughs> woo woo! Just hand them the Rotisserie League Championship trophy. Wow, but that's nice. why they play the game, y'all. Yep. Injuries, plus a lack of cohesion and chemistry, has once again proven to be the kryptonite mm -hmm. to this so-called super team. Right. So my message to the GMs is clear. Back your coach, sir. That person is more concerned with the success on the name on the front of the jersey and not so much about the contract extension for the name on the back. God bless. You're right, Blaine, but as a fan, I couldn't help but be excited in 2004 when we were one car Malone injury away from taking the finals. Woo -woo. Is that right, Brother Pat? Yeah. You don't have to tell me that the 4th of July sparkler is your favorite firecracker. Thanks. Good lord.